plus uh, five additional uh, minutes for uh, to allow for some questions. And so um, without further, further ado, uh, please let me introduce the first speaker, Ali Alowashi from the Algerian Space Agency. Um, and well, he will be presenting the paper, Experimental Validation of Nonlinear Optimization Frameworks for Solving Bundle as Adjustment in Structure from Motion. So please, Ali, you can start your presentation. And as I said, uh, you have 15 minutes to present, plus some additional uh, time uh, to solve some questions. Uh, so please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the presentation of my paper titled Experimental Validation of Nonlinear Optimization Frameworks for Solving Bundle Adjustment in Structure from Motion. At first, this is the outline of my presentation. In the first section, I present firstly the problem of bundle adjustment in structure from motion. Then I give the main contribution of this paper. In the second section, I present a description of the coordinate systems in camera modeling. In the third section, I present a formulation of bundle adjustment algorithm in structure from motion based on Liverpool Mark I algorithm. In the fourth section, I review firstly the famous nonlinear optimization frameworks that implemented Liebenberg Marquardt algorithm for solving bundle adjustment. After that, I present a classification of these frameworks according to, to the considered applications. In the fifth section, I present the experimental results. Then I finish up by the conclusion and the future works in the last section. So first, Introduction. Structure from motion is a proficient technique for 3D reconstruction from multiple views. However, its potential could only be seen after the developments of the computers and digital photographs, especially in the developing in the developing countries. Uh, sorry, yes, to, because I'm interrupting, but uh, we don't see the the changes in your slides. Uh, so maybe so. Um, we are we are looking at the press, uh, PowerPoint window, uh, but but we don't see how the the, the slides are changing. So uh, maybe uh, it is not the the right uh, window to 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 share because maybe you you shared the uh, the wrong window. I, I don't know, Ricardo, if you could assist us with with this. Uh, well, I don't know. Probably, uh, if you, Ali, uh, can uh, turn to presentation of the, of the PowerPoint, and you can change uh, your slides. Because it's not, it's not a complete window uh, open. Well, well, I mean, uh, we see the PowerPoint uh, 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 window, but not oh. in presentation. Not in presentation. Oh, in presentation mode. Oh, uh, well, should we, should, we should we the, the first slide, the, the second slide. Oh, yeah. we, we can use that window uh, so that you can use this instead of the presentation mode. Okay, I, I will use PDF instead, a bit PDF. PDF, not the PowerPoint, because there are some animations that appear, okay? Uh, well, as you prefer. Okay, please continue, Ali. Can you see the presentation? Uh, not, not yet. Uh... I can't see anything. Did you already share the, the, the window? Can you see the window now? No, no, no. Oh, can you see the window? Yes, we, we can see it now, the PowerPoint. Okay. Sorry. 
How about this? Can you see the PowerPoint? Can you see my PowerPoint now? Yes, you 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 can use the, the PowerPoint, uh, the window where where you are moving your your cursor. Uh, we can see. But, but I have some animations. I should I should I should I should uh, in the in the PowerPoint. I should play the animations also. I have some animations in the PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, in the menu in a slideshow. Slideshow, okay. Start uh, from, from beginning. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? You could you cannot see the presentation? No. I mean something is wrong here. Mm. Present online? Uh, no. Okay, okay. Now we can you see PowerPoint? Yes, the, the PowerPoint. Yes, we we can see it. Uh, how can I how can I uh, uh, run the PowerPoint with the animations? I have some animations in the in my slides. So that I in the next coming, I will not. Uh, I have some pages that have some animations. I made, I made some animations in some slides. So if I I I click on this, it told me that you cannot see the PowerPoint. So how can I present mm -hmm. you no. the slide slide? So, uh, when you start your slideshow. Um, and then you can go to the to the option to share the screen, and then you can see that you can uh, share different windows. Uh, maybe uh, you can select. I'm afraid that that's the problem because uh, he is uh, sharing uh, not the presentation itself, because there are two windows: one of the presentation and one of the PowerPoint. Exactly. So select select. The window of the presentation, not the window of the PowerPoint slides. Yes, you, you can share in your so, desktop and then uh, share it again, and and then you can see different um, screens that you can share. And please okay. select with the slideshow. Or maybe if, if you can see the option to share the, the slide. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait for me. For I will, I will try to send it to. I will try to read from the PDF, not the.
Hi, um, sometimes I have the same problem. Uh, maybe you can, if you don't use the full screen mode, sometimes it works. Yeah, just, just with the PowerPoint window, I, I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because when, when you put it in full screen, it's when the problem starts. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. At least for me in Teams, sometimes that works. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, okay, okay. I, 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 I will save the file as PDF, then I will run it from the PDF, okay? Okay, Ali. Okay. Uh, should we start from the big? I uh, should we start from the beginning? Uh, yes, once you are ready to to share the screen again. Okay. Please share the screen again. Just a moment, please. I will share the PDF. PDF. PDF file. Yeah. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, you can yes, see that PDF. Okay, uh, I think we should restart the session, and I should I restart the, my presentation. Okay, go go ahead, Ali. Um, uh, well, the 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 session time is for six presentations, and we only have five speakers, so so we we can we can do it. So so just uh, go ahead and and please start again your presentation. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the presentation of my paper titled Experimental Validation of Nonlinear Optimization Frameworks for Solving Bundle Adjustment in Structure from Motion. At first, this is the outline of my presentation. In the first section, I present firstly the problem of bundle adjustment in structure from motion. Then I give the main contribution of this paper. In the second section, I present a description of the coordinate systems in camera modeling. In the third section, I present a formulation of bundle adjustment algorithm in structure from motion based on Levenberg Marquardt algorithm. In the fourth section, I review firstly the famous nonlinear optimization frameworks that implemented Levenberg Marquardt algorithm for solving bundle adjustment. After that, I present a classification of these frameworks according to the considered applications. In the fifth section, I present the experimental results. Then I finish up by the conclusion and the future works in the last, in the last section. So one introduction. Structure from motion is a proficient technique for 3D reconstruction from multiple views. However, its potentials could only be seen after the developments of computers and digital photographs, especially in the developing countries. Nowadays, SFM is applied in many applicative scenarios, ranging from earth observation to heritage documentation. The main steps of structure from motion algorithm for 3D reconstruction from multiple views are shown in figure one. That covers features detection and matching, camera motion estimation, triangulation, and bundle adjustment. An important task in structure from motion that has been solved just recently in practice is bundle adjustment. Its purpose is to, meet, to optimize simultaneously the camera pose and 3D structure of the scene. Levenberg Marquardt, or also known as the damped least square algorithm, has proven to, the, to be the most successful technique for solving bundle adjustment due to its ease of implementation and use of an effective damping strategy that assists the ability to converge quickly from a wide range of initial gases by iteratively linearizing the function to be minimized in the neighborhood of the current estimate the Levenberg Marquardt algorithm involves the solution of linear systems termed the normal equations however equations however bundle adjustment in structure from motion has been solved just recently in practice due to memory and efficiency requirements. The contribution of this paper is to present an experimental validation of the most popular open source optimization frameworks 
which implemented Levenberg Marquardt algorithm for solving bundle adjustment in structure from motion. Therefore, the, the comparison of their performance is conducted by using bundle adjustment in the large benchmark. The performance of, of each approach is evaluated in terms of, of reprojection error and processing time. To camera modeling, let's assume a 3D point that is projected into a 3D point in the image plane as shown in figure 2. The transformation from 3D to 2D plane is given by equation 1, whereas denotes the skew factor, F denotes the focal length, R is a 3 by 3 rotation matrix, T is a 1 by 3 translation vector. Equation 1 can be re rewritten as given by equation 2, where K is the internal calibration matrix, M is, is the camera projection matrix. 3 bundle adjustment algorithm in structure from motion. Let's consider a simple setup that is composed of three images as shown in figure 3, where the 3D point XG is visible in every image. Suppose that the projection matrices of the 3D points have been already estimated from the corresponding 2D features extracted previously in the images. Therefore, the reprojection vector error vector is given by equation 3, where i equals 1, 2 to n, j, j equals 1, 2 to m, x, i, j is the 2D image point, m, e is the unknown camera matrix, and XG is the estimated 3D point. The reprojection function F is given by equation 4, where rho E J is an indicator function, <coughs> yes, yes, where rho I G equals 1 if the point XG is visible in the eye camera, otherwise rho ig equals zero. A valid solution for k1 r1 t1, k2 r2 t2, k3 r3 t3, and x1 x2 x3 must let the reprojection errors of four as minima as possible. For review and classification of nonlinear optimization frameworks. Review of nonlinear optimization frameworks. Georgia Text Modeling and Mapping is a C++ library based on Factors Graph. It provides state-of-the-art solutions to the simultaneous localization and mapping and structure from motion problems. It also provides a MATLAB interface which allows for rapid prototype development, visualization, and user interaction. Georgia Text Modeling and Mapping exploits sparsity to be computationally efficient. The implemented solvers in Georgia Tech smoothing and mapping are Levenberg Marquardt, Gauss Newton, the conjugate gradient optimizer, dog leg, and incremental smoothing and mapping. General graph optimization is another open source C library for batch optimization of functions that can be embedded in a graph. It's a framework for optimizing graph-based nonlinear error functions. The implemented solvers in general graph optimization are Levenberg Marquardt, Gauss Newton, and Paul's Dogleg. Ceres is an open source C++ library for modeling and solving large complicated optimization tasks with large scale data. It has been used in project production at Google. Since 2010, it can be used to solve nonlinear least squares problems with bounds, constraints, and general and constraint optimization problems. The implemented solvers in series are Levenberg Marquardt, Power Stugleg, and Line Search. Sparse bundle adjustment is a generic sparse bundle adjustment that is the C++ package based on the Levenberg Marquardt algorithm. Sparse bundle adjustment has been implemented with special emphasis on the flexibility and performance efficiency 
It is a specialized Levenberg Mark I variant that is tailored to fit the sparseness commonly encountered in structural from motion problems. Sparse sparse bundle adjustment takes that takes advantage of sparse secondary structure in the sparse bundle adjustment problem to perform efficient optimization. It constructs a sparse ECM matrix using sparse ordered storage for its sublocks. Sparse sparse bundle adjustment outperforms the standard sparse bundle adjustment library by over an order of magnitude on typical mic mapping datasets, which have sparse secondary structures. It also fa it is also faster than sparse bundle adjustment on more dense datasets. Parallel bundle adjustment is a parallel accelerated implementation of bundle adjustment for multi-core CPU and GPU processors. The major advantage of this library is to exploit hardware, hardware parallelism for efficiently solving large-scale 3D scenery construction problems by restructuring the nonlinear optimization problem. The overall computation becomes dominated by a series of simple matrix vector operations. Classification of nonlinear optimization frameworks. These frameworks are classified in this work as integrated in table one, which are summarized as follows. General purpose solvers that are Georgia Tech smoothing and mapping, general graph optimization and series implement different approaches that are useful for many comp applications in robotics and computer vision, such as post estimation, image teaching, 3D reconstruction, and so on. Specific bundle adjustment solvers that are sparse bundle adjustment, sparse sparse bundle adjustment, and parallel bundle adjustment implement Levenberg Marquard algorithm, and they are mainly dedicated to bundle adjust the 3D reconstruction in structure from motion. Five experimental results. Bundle adjustment in the large benchmark description. The comparison is conducted with bundle adjustment in the large benchmark that is released for the first time at the SCCV conference 2010. This is the biggest data set for evaluating bundle adjustment algorithms up to now. The whole bundle adjustment in the large data sets include, includes five sub data sets and each one includes inequality sequences. Therefore, four sequences are selected in this paper from each sub data set for performance evaluation. The details of the selected sequences are listed in table two, where the initial error in pixels is computed without bundle adjustment. Comparative results. Figure four shows the results of four projection errors in pixels of each method, in which Ceres has the smallest values in all sequences, while figure five illustrates the computation times in seconds of each approach, where Ceres has the fast speed among these compared methods. Therefore, as it was expected, it is concluded from figure four and figure five that Cirrus Solver offers the best performance for all the sequences of table two in comparison to the other approaches. Six conclusion. This paper presents firstly a review of the prevalent optimization frameworks with open source code for solving bundle adjustment in structure for motion and simultaneous localization and mapping applications. This review mainly includes the following approaches, Georgia Tech smoothing and mapping, general graph optimization, sparse bundle adjustment, sparse sparse bundle adjustment, parallel bundle adjustment, and Serra solver. These frameworks are classified in this paper into one general purpose optimization solvers that are Georgia Tech smoothing and mapping, general graph optimization, and series, and two specific bundle adjustment solvers that are sparse, sparse bundle adjustment, sparse sparse bundle adjustment, and parallel bundle adjustment. These are the best and the most used optimization frameworks for solving bundle adjustment in the literature. After that, a comparative study is conducted between these approaches by using bundle adjustment in the large benchmark. The comparative results demonstrated that Serra Solver 
is capable to offer the best performance in terms of quality of reconstruction, scalability and sensitivity to settings as it was expected, despite it is a general purpose optimization solver. Moreover, Sierra Solver has a simple application programming interface with straightforward modeling of the problem. Future direction of this study is the implementation of Liebenberg Markward algorithm based on parallel computing technology for solving bundle adjustment in features based 3D reconstruction in order to generate optimization results which are competitive to the state of the art approaches for the case of large and very large scale problems. This appendix shows the 3D point clouds of the sequences. Cameras are indicated with red frames while 3D points are shown with black dots. This is the list of references. Thanks for your attention. OK, many thanks, uh, Ali, for your presentation. And we have some minutes now uh, for in case there is any question. Any question for Ali? Well, I, I have a question, Ali. Uh, well, in, in this case, you compare different frameworks, but uh, all of them using the, the same algorithm, the LM algorithm for solving this problem. Um, but uh, do you know any other solution approaches that can be used for uh, to tackle this, this problem? So any alternative algorithms and how they compare with respect to this LM algorithm that you use here? These are uh, open source frameworks, optimization frameworks. These are open source. There are some solutions in the, that appear each year in the literature, but they are not open. Most of them, they are not open source. And if you uh, look in the in the in the in the internet, you you will have some new solutions without the code. Most of the new solutions. Uh, they, they 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 haven't they they, they don't present the the open source of the of their approach. So I I focus on the open source solutions only on the open source and the best uh, solutions in the internet. Okay, many thanks, Ali. Well. Thank you. Uh, in case there is any additional questions, uh, please feel free to contact Ali. Uh, here you can see in the screen the, the email address of, of Ali, so that you, um, I assume he will be happy to, to receive any email with additional questions that you may have. And many thanks, Ali, for your presentation. And Thank you. Uh, let us uh, move to the second uh, talk of this session. Uh, and Nusrat, if you could please uh, start trying to, to share uh, your screen. So that we can be ready. And well, um, I I would like to introduce Nusrat Jahan, so that um, uh, our second speaker of this session. Um, uh, she's from uh, the Rashahi University of Engineering and Technology and Technology in Bangladesh, and she will be presenting the paper autoencoder-based unsupervised for COVID-19 screening on chest X-ray images. Um, so um, we are ready now. Uh, if uh, Nusrat, if you can share your screen. Oh, oh, oh yeah, she, she's already a presenter. Okay. And well, we can move to, to our next talk. First, I would like to compare the organization because I don't see the name of our third speaker in the in the attendee list. So, uh, Ricardo, could you confirm if, if you see the, 
our third speaker, Professor. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't see, well, Krishna Kumar. I, I don't know if he is there in the, in the room. Well, maybe we can skip this talk, and if, if yeah. the speaker arrives, we can have the presentation later. And then we can move now to, to the uh, next uh, presentation by Carlos Osorio from Inaue, Mexico. Uh, um, Carlos, if you could please uh, share your, your presentation. One moment, please. Okay. Carlos Osorio is from Inaue in Mexico, and he will be presenting us the, the paper two-dimensional near-infrared single-pixel imaging uh, spatial resolution evaluation under scattering condition. Um, so when you are ready, Carlos. OK, you, you can see presentation? Uh, I can see it now. Uh, no, I, I don't see it yet. Yeah, OK, uh, all right. Good morning, my name is Carlos Osorio. All the presentation is to be near FP expansion of resolution evaluation on the scattering condition. The contact is introduction, scattering, single piece of camera, FPC, result, spatial resolution, conclusion, and question. Introduction. Current vision sensor I uh, Carlos for application uh, from sorry to, to interrupt the uh, with see your presentation yet. We are not seeing okay. your present, Carlos. One moment. Sorry. Uh, okay, you, you can see in a moment? Oh, yes, we can see it now. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, one moment. Good morning, my name is okay. Carlos Sorry. Okay. Okay. You can see presentation. Yes, yes, we can see it now. Okay, I mean. Good morning, my name is Carlos Sorio. The title for the presentation is to be near LP expansion of resolution evaluation on the scattering condition. The content is introduction, scattering, single piece of camera, FPC, result, spatial resolution. Conclusion and question. Introduction. Current vision sensor are two essential for application from UAV to autonomous vehicle. We can see different vision systems covering the spectrum electromagnetic from visible to the microwave. Some application in those vision systems that integrate visible sensor with other sources that are near thermal infrared. And anti-factor. To compensate for the limitation on the sensor with scattering and low illumination. This is sensor operates between lightning and optical regions. Keeping of the type of the range operation, the spatial resolution can be reduced in the scattering condition. For application of detection, the obstacle and capture image is needed to determine the spatial resolution division system. The spatial resolution in a image quite a metric for an optical system, for which for many methods are defined in the state of the art for estimation of the spatial resolution and depending on the type of the optical system. The second test used to determine of the limitation resolution of the resolution targets Interferometry using interferometry with forensic laser source NTF use no interferometry metal NTF or LRR by using an slamus target. 
scattering. How does the scattering limit perform our division system? When light interacts with and water particles in the ice, various physical phenomena occur reflection, refraction, absorption, and scattering. Effects that degrade the main factor level concert due to degrade level photons detector by photo detector in the vision system. The change in the concert in the imaging is determined to be low. In the case of the caricature imaging, in the visual spectrum, the scattering effect is higher than infrared, for which the visibility is limited by the few meter. In the case of the vision system, the first scattering is crashing, reducing in the contrast imaging, limiting the performance of the vision system in the maximum capture distance and spatial solution. For a solution use, vision system where active illumination in the wireless as near infrared. Behind the single pixel camera, as one of the best available for implementation in the new band. Single pixel camera FPC. The generation image using the single pixel image approach is based on the principle of the modulation of the spatial information obtained for the production of and the sequence or structural pattern of light across light modulation. Contradiction between the structural and reflection light signal, we can make the reconstruction by applying a nonlinear regression. It's possible to obtain a linear approximation of the photographic essence. The architecture vision system based on GPA GPU with GPU center units controller. To read the reconstruction in my library, we have precomposition sensing using a low sample for the reconstruction imaging. The structure FPA proposed is based on the structure illumination appears to be applied to a near FPA system based on the illumination produced by an array of the end to end near lens emission radiation via the peaks wellness of the 400 515 nanometer. An index photodiode was using a single piece of detector and ready to play. This activity illumination approach over several advances is a can operate in different other weather conditions on the low level illumination, as well as with dark or bright or smoke, and be less sensitive to the background radiation noise. The Inca architecture proposed in this work is divided into two main parts the free part, Inca photo detector, and a ray emission near an ADC. The second part of the electric and signal emission of the FPD model is using ADC and repetitive data processing using GPU. The GPU is responsible for the generation of the Albert pattern and processing the cover the data by ADC using the OVP algorithm running in the GPU to generate the 2D images. The error play in the 2D reconstruction if I know or the machine for three or GP. We are playing the tour based on the GPU to reduce the processing time, where the algorithm is present, recoupling the critical calculation. We also use number post with the frameatory emission of the position resolution. Binary test imaging, test imaging signal and lines, the chief of the age is estimated by fitting to the age pixels. The ESC and EDS are estimated for the pixel in the vicinities of the ELS. Our intention of the cement that connection. A piece with a near P image. The calculation of the LF to any orientation is made by differentiating cross the displacement dimension. We apply FPT over LZ and obtain the modulation transfer function parameter defined of the resolution constant. We apply to the fast transformation Fourier over the measure of NTF and we can obtain the PCF over the application to flash up to calculation the spatial resolution defined by equation one. Resultants spatial resolution, the experimental sector, the near P system, the best takes as a control system for emulation for and background condition. The technology 
to be placed in the class box. In the text base, we can simulate on the condition scattering using unifying physiologic. In the first test, using imagine circle of the 15 millimeter of the diameter. In this test, to determine the variation of the facial solution with the distance. In different scenarios, with condition of the scattering. In this preparation, locate the test of your range for distance from 18 to 30 centimeters. With that, we can determine the spatial solution in the position of the distance. In the short distance below 20 centimeters, the spear and the scanning I has a spatial solution of the wrong 25 millimeters. On the forward condition at the 20 millimeters without the full condition. And the, for the maximum distance of the 30 centimeters, the special solution increase and result value heighten that 14 millimeters. Limit the detection is more obvious. In this condition, the basic and key scanning method I have a visual resolution below 15 millimeters on the full condition and the 14 millimeters using sparse skitter and under foggy condition. With that, we have even scanning at the metal we and the better rank of the patient resolution under fully condition and fear for without fully condition. The second test using reference light, using the heat scanning method that represents the best spatial resolution. With that, we determine what the minimum distance separation between oil is a 10 millimeters for the both axis and the for simple check the minimum width is the XX 11 millimeter and the XG 12 millimeter. Well, but an XG 16 millimeter and XG 18 millimeter with book scenario. Conclusion As speed up of fiber scan, we can get small detection of here with a resolution of the 20 millimeter under full condition and below 20 millimeter scenario with all four. And the maximum distance of the 15 centimeters. The partial resolution is heightened than 14 millimeters. The change symmetry. We see that zigzag and speed scanning present the loss in the information to far distance. And under full condition, speed has the best spiral solution. Any question? Uh, one moment, the presentation one video, the application.
Any question? Uh, Okay, thank you very much, Carlos, for your presentation. This is yeah. a very interesting topic. Um, any any question for, for for Carlos? Carlos, how challenging is to to define the conditions for the experiments? For example, you are in. Um, considering uh, uh, scenarios with rain and fog, uh, but how to uh, uh, to make this uh, a controlled environment? So how 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 dense is the fog, the 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 rain? So how how challenging is this part of the evaluation? Okay, the principal challenge is the control of the condition, the raining and the and the fog. Uh, this moment is the evaluation is only laboratory is next uh, next evaluation in one condition uh, outdoor in real scenario. Uh, this moment is the I need evaluation in the near and the far far distance. Okay. Okay. Any other question? Hi. Uh, this is different or do you think is had some advantage over uh, LIDAR? It's a prototype. Uh, prototype capture in the in the near infrared. Yeah, yeah but a lidar use uh, I think laser, right? So, do you think a lidar could be do the same thing? In the in the testing on the in the laboratory. No. Yeah, on, on lab. So, yes, it's in in the next in the prototypes in this in the uh, integration in, in drones. Evaluation in other condition is in a real, real scenario. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other question? Well, thank you very much, Carlos, for, for your presentation. Thank you. And we can uh, proceed now to our final uh, talk uh, by Car Carlos. Muniti, uh, Minuti Martinez from the National Polytechnic Institute, Mexico, uh, who will be presenting us the paper Exploring Nonlinear Effects of Air Pollution on Hospital Admissions by Disease Using Gradient Boosting Machines. So please go ahead, Carlos. We can already see your, your presentation. And oh, we can, can start now. Thank you. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. So I'm going to start with my presentation. Can you hear me well? Yes, perfectly. Oh, great. Okay, well, uh, we are exploring nonlinear effects in air pollution on hospital admissions uh, using gradient boosting machines. So I'm going to start uh, directly showing our motivation. So air pollution has been linked to premature mortality and reduced life expectancy, in, and it has acute and chronic effects on human health. So these effects can be difficult to measure because it's possible uh, interaction and nonlinear relationships will be present, for example, with age or, or weight, sex, and also socioeconomic status. So multidimensional relationships are difficult to model using conventional statistic methods. And uh, these conventional methods are the fact uh, the, the main models used in this kind of research. But uh, machine learning techniques have been quite successful in this domain. So in this research, we are trying to use this kind of techniques in order to explore nonlinear and interaction between variables. So in this study, gradient boosting regression trees were used to predict severity mor uh, or mortality of leading causes of hospitalization in Mexico City. We use, we use uh, 90,000 patients during the year 2015 to 2020 to measure the impact of different air pollutants. Uh, linear and nonlinear relationships were found, uh, as well as significant effects on air pollutants for most of the prevalent disease. Uh, about the state of the art, uh, the GVD risk factor collaboration in 2019 studies trends in exposure of leading risk factors on human health 
And they found, for example, that the largest increase in waste exposure were for ambiental particle matters, pollution. This also known uh, as PM. In addition, some studies show the relationship between socioeconomic status and air pollution, making even the need to include air pollution and sex uh, simultaneously to, in, in order to study human health. Conventional modeling uh, methods have to be in trouble capturing this high dimensional relationship, as already I said. So uh, gradient boosting machines is one of these techniques can be useful can be successful with this kind of relationship by, by automatically discovering complex data structures, including nonlinear or high order interactions. And also gradient boosting models has already been successful for use in predictive analysis in medicine against other machine learning studies. So they uh, try to predict in hospital mortality of patients with sepsis using different models. Uh, these models were less absolute in care, uh, select, selection operator, also known as lasso regression, random forest, gradient boosting, and uh, logistic regression. Uh, between the, these models, gradient boosting model was uh, the one showing the best performance. So about the materials and methods, again, the objective is to determine uh, the, the relevance of air pollution in the leading cause of hospitalizations, including socioeconomic status and air pollutants indicators for leading cause of hospitalization and their nonlinear relationships. So how we are going to do this? Well, uh, we need the no, our independent, no, our dependent variable. This one is severity of this hospitalization, which is determined by the number of days of hospitalization, and whether or not the death occurred of each patient. So, uh, related independent variables are also included, as the age, weight, gender, locality of residence, and the date of admission. For the socioeconomic status indicators. We uh, usually you can find only uh, indicator that include the economic factor or the social factor, but we needed both at the same time. Or we, we so we generated an, an indicator for this task, and we this is included as a predictor variable. For the air pollutants, the main air pollutant exposure were estimated for each locality in the, between, within Mexico City area and used as predictive variables. And the gradient boost is trained and the score for each variable is estimated using the importance of each variable and a penalty term. I'm going to show later how this score is estimated. And about the explainability of the model, it's approached using uh, part partial dependence graphics. So it's easier to understand this nonlinear relationship. About the data sources, well, for the hospitalization data, we use the anonymized data from the public hospitals were provided by the Ministry of Health in Mexico City, also known as CEDESA. This is in accordance with the CONACYT project. Also uh, about the air pollution concentration, well, this were obtained from Mexico City Automatic Air Quality Monitoring Network. We used a 15-year average from 2005 to 2020. For each monitoring station, uh, the, average, uh, the average exposure was calculated, for example, for particle matters, for monoxides, and also we, we have a nitrogen, nitrogen oxidized and carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide. So a value for each locality was estimated was increasing for extrapolate the, value, the values from the monitoring stations. And the census population of housing of 2020 was used to construct SES indicators. For the size factors, socioeconomic factors, were uh, derived using factor analysis to have economic factor and a social factor. High values of these factors represent less favorable circumstances. 
And these factors were validated using regression analysis to estimate other well-known factors, uh, such as social gap index or the social development index and human development index. In all of these different sex factors that already are known, we have a coefficient of determination of at least 0.9. So we conclude that these new uh, sex factors are, are, are very reliable. For the air pollutants, well, we have a problem in the Mexico City area with this with these pollutants, they are correlated, the, the exposure between them. Some are positive correlated, so some of them are negative correlated. So we don't, we can include uh, just as variables, we need to construct factors because if, you, if we include only the variables, we are going to have very many problems interpreting these effects. And also it's probable we are going to have a Wrong estimates of the effects of H pollutants. So we construct these factors using principal component analysis. Uh, so we group similar uh, correlated uh, pollutants. In this case, we get this, these three factors, PMCO, which includes PM10, PM25, and CO. Also, we, we have a, a factor for the nitrogen oxidase and another factor which has the ozone and also the, the sulfur dioxide. So for the causes of hospitalization, this is the ones we are studying. Renal insufficiency, diabetes mellitus, liver disease, cerebrovascular disease, heart disease, influenza pneumonia, and COVID-19. This is the way we measure severity of hospitalization. Uh, it's a value between zero and one. It's a continuous value. For if the death of current in the hospitalization, we use uh, the number of days of hospitalization and the maximum number of days uh, divided by, by the maximum number of days. And the other ways, we use the maximum number of days between the, the uh, hospitalization days. So, uh, values close to zero means that the hospitalization was a survival and also the patient was had spent only a few days in the hospital. And values very close to one means that the hospitalization occurred at death and it was very quickly. So it's a high severity for that. About the scoring of relevant variables, we are using the variable importance of the, of the model calculated by, by the gradient boosted model. This variable importance is the gene importance. And we penalize uh, this variable importance using the uh, area under the curve in the validating, validating data set. In order to penalize if the model is not too good in order to predict, we penalize the importance of the variable. So we are at the end, we are going to use this score. Okay, about the results, in this table, we have uh, the scores of different variables. For example, in the third column, we have the, for the economic factor, uh, the social, in the fourth column, the, soci the socioeconomic, the social factor, and uh, later the different pollutants. And you can compare with other very important variables is the age and the weight. You can see the, the importance of these variables are the largest. For example, the, usually the age is the largest importance of for this disease in the severity of hospitalization. For example, in influenza and pneumonia is the most important variable uh, with 0.7 later. After that is for COVID, the age. Uh, for the weight is for liver disease and cerebral scurvy disease. And you can say that for the factor of PM and CO, the cerebral vascular disease and liver disease have the greatest sensitivity to exposures of these pollutants. For uh, the nitrogen oxidase, is renal insufficiency, uh, the, the the disease with the highest sensitivity to these exposures. 
And liver disease is uh, most sensitive to exposures of, of the sulfur dioxide and carbon and ozone. Here, are, this is an example of this variable importance for the training data set and the validation data set. For example, you can see the age is very important and the weight here for renal insufficiency. We also included other variables in order to, to take into account for many causes. For example, immune is the municipality within Mexico City. Uh, and proceed is the this patient proceed from ER. So if this, proceed, uh, this patient proceeds for ER, it has the largest uh, severity for hospitalization. So you can see here in these variables, uh, the, the nitrogen oxidized are very important for renal insufficiency. Here you can see the nonlinear and linear relationships between variables. For example, age and weight. You can see, for example, uh, there is an optimal weight or average weight with the, the less severity, the smallest severity is about 55, 60 uh, kilograms. Uh, but if you have a lower weight, it increases the severity of the hospitalization. And also if you have a, a higher weight. For uh, the contaminants or the pollutants, we have an interaction between, it's a slight interaction between PMCO and NO2. We can see it's mainly due to NO2, but it's a small interaction between PM and CO. Also, the date of the hospitalization, how uh, it's, it has a, really, a small effect. About uh, COVID-19, you can see uh, again the main variables. For example, the leading variable here for severity in the hospitalization is the age, the date of the hospitalization, the weight, uh, for example, also the, fact, the economical factor. And about the nonlinear relationships, uh, you can see a nonlinear non -linear relationship between age and weight. Uh, higher values of both have, have the higher risk, but it is not linear, this relationship. Uh, also, you can see an interaction, a nonlinear interaction between PM and NO pollutants here with the highest value for a high exposure of both of them. For diabetes mellitus, you can see again, uh, there is a, in the weight, there is an optimal weight value with the smallest risk of severity. But if you have a higher weight or a small, uh, smaller weight is going to increase that severity. And for the pollutants, their pollutants is mainly controlled by NO2, but it has a small interaction with PM. Both have a larger risk with the presence of both are bigger. For heart disease, uh, also, we see again a nonlinear relationship with the weight. In this case, you have two optimal weights, one around 60 uh, kilograms and another of around uh, 85, 90. This is probable because uh, one is for male and female uh, sex. Uh, but if you have higher or lower weight, uh, you are going to have a, a higher risk. Uh, here, in, about the pollutants, is the, the effect is only mainly caused by NO2, also pollutant. And also, it, we can see an increase on the risk of, along the years with the PM pollutant, but, and also for the NO2. For liver disease, here is different about uh, the 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 larger risk is how is related with with 
<coughs> with the small uh, the small weight. So here is the larger risk, and also we we can find a small non-linear relationship with the two pollutants PM and NO2, and also with the data and PM. Uh, for influenza pneumonia, it's similar to other about the age and weight. We have an optimal value with high, larger risks if the weight is higher or lower. Here for the pollutant, it's, uh, it's almost a linear risk and it's almost controlled all with PM and CO. Uh, with the date, is, there is a non-linear non relationship with PM and a linear relationship uh, with NO2. For cerebrovascular disease, uh, we found uh, also, again, uh, the smaller weight is the one who has the larger risk. And the presence of PM, CO, and NO2, larger person is the one with higher risk. Uh, we also see an increase in risk about the pollutants along the date. So conclusion, uh, uh, these models such as gradient boosting allow to the exploration of highly nonlinear relationship and interaction between variables. Some of these can be previously suspected or even known now. So the knowledge acquired through this type of models can be incorporated into statistical models to validate these results. We can use these gradient boosting methods to explore these relationships and test in a more classical statistical model. And the direct interactions between variables are hard to study, but these models could be useful to explore these effects. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Carlos, for this very interesting presentation. And any, any question for Carlos? Question? Questions? Okay, Carlos, uh, I, I, there's uh, something that I, I, I'm sure that if I read the paper, things will be clear. Uh, but, but for now, I would like to ask you, um, uh, well, I, I'm no expert, but, but I, I assume that the levels of pollution uh, change over time, so uh, they are not constant. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how, how uh, do you link the patient's uh, record, the patient's information with some specific measurement of this pollutants over time. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I explain myself, uh, but, but I mean, uh, what, what specific measure uh, over time of these pollutions uh, are, are linked to the, to the records of the, of the patients? There are, are two ways for that. Actually, we use the average of, of the exposure over 15 years. So in that sense, there is no time value about the, the exposure, but there is a, a time value in the date. We are, uh, when you use the date as a predictive variable, we have uh, data from 2015 to 2020. So yes, you are right. Uh, the exposure is different in these years. Usually it's uh, smaller when the years are increasing. So we can try to test that uh, with this. For example, we, in, this, in this case, for example, pneumonia and influenza, you can see uh, along these years, the risk is smaller. So maybe it could be because the presence of this pollutant is smaller uh, with time, with these years, or maybe they are treating the pneumonia better. We don't know, but it could be both of them. But you, you also can see in some cases, there are an increase of, of the risks over time. Mm -hmm. Let me say, I, I don't remember which one is. Ah, this one. Um, renal insufficiency, there is a, a small increase of risk over time of this. This is 
the value of the month. So in 60 months, the, the risk increased for this pollutant. Even though the concentrations are smaller over time, uh, these risks have been increased. So maybe we are more sensitive to, for this uh, in this disease for this pollutant, or maybe the care for this uh, for this uh, disease is worse. We don't know, but the risks have been increased over time. Very interesting. Any other question for Carlos? Okay, if no more questions, then we can end this session. I think the, the, the speaker that was missing is not here. Uh, so we can we can end the session. And well, I would like to thank all of you for attending this, this session and hope uh, you have enjoyed the talks and, and well, just inviting you to, to continue enjoying the conference and have a, a very nice afternoon. Thank you very much to, uh, to everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.